Errol Spence versus Jordanis Ugas. Not the fight that most boxing fans wanted, but a pretty good scrap with three belts on the line nonetheless. Let's get straight into Your it. Dennis is an orthodox fighter and Spence is a southpaw making this an open stance match. In open stance matches, Errol is a bit more creative offensively from the outside, although still not an elite counterpuncher. He's noticeably more comfortable in the open stance as it's much more familiar to southpaws, being that most fighters are orthodox fighters, so most of southpaws fights will be open stance. Case in point, 25 of Errol's 27 fights have been open stance fights. On the outside, Errol's game still revolves around a jab, but he mixes up basic combinations with not so basic strikes. Occasionally surprising unexpected orthodox opponents with lead power punches and looping lead front and backhand hooks. Ugas was a highly decorated Cuban amateur. As an orthodox fighter, the open stance is nothing new to him as the Cuban amateur system has tons of southpaws. You can see at least five in this random training video alone. Any American amateur should be able to tell you how rare this would be in the States. Defensively, just as effective as Arrow's active high guard and in and out steps and shuffles is the sheer volume of punches he throws, inferring to the old adage, your offense is your best defense. For Arrow, it might be, especially when he's facing a relatively flat-footed orthodox opponent who waits to counter and defaults to the high guard. Like I mentioned in the Crawford vs. Spence film study, all Arrow's opponents have either have been relatively flat-footed, default to the high guard, or were inside fighters themselves. Well, Ugas checks two out of the three boxes. Ugas is similar to Danny Garcia in that he's a counterpuncher and a waiter, meaning they both tend to wait on their opponents to initiate offense so they can counterpunch and relatively rarely initiate the action themselves. I rate him a slightly better counterpuncher than Danny Garcia in that his hands are quicker and will throw counter combinations with more variety. Their timing is around even. What he doesn't have that Garcia had are those heavy hands. This one is over. Dennis Ugas gets the stoppage victory. With officially one stoppage and one knockdown in his last six fights at welterweight and 12 knockouts and 31 fights as a pro, we aren't talking about formidable power for you, Dennis Ugas. But what Ugas does have is a very, very wide array of counter punches out that high guard. Round number five, it's say uh, you're done. But he shouldn't do it because that was an Asian bout. And this time Robinson comes back. After this exchange, look, boom, the counter immediately. There, right on the belt right there from Uga, strikes him on the, on the map. He should be thrilled in this bout. Right hand. Ugas also has a very nice jab that's normally based off timing. They also counter with the jab over a jab very well. On the relatively rare occasions Ugas does initiate offense, he opens up with wide backhand hooks, overhands, and crosses behind a feint, jab, or as a lead punch. Attacks that Spence has been vulnerable to through and around the high guard. Head movement to get out of the way of that right. No, I, 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 oh yeah. Final Without 30 seconds. Final 10 seconds. Fan three with it all. Good hard right hand by Ugas. Doubling up on the jab. Those different looks, those different ways of defending Manny Pacquiao's punch. Yeah. You're going to lose this fight if you don't lose those flurries. He makes it look it looks good. I think incurring on the other fighter. Those shots are landing from Ugas. Look at that. Gallon, a little turn and a little left. It's off. Good right right. there. I agree with it all. Good hard right. See some of the body work by your Dennis Ugas. Right hand right on the belt. It's 
It's very likely that the more Ugas initiates offense, the better his chances will become to win this fight, mostly because of dueling high guards. The high guard provides no resistance in the space between you and your opponent. Nothing in the lane of a punch, nothing to intimidate, and nothing to cause your opponent hesitation. When you add a relatively flat-footed fighter who lacks movement in the equation, there's nothing to stop your opponent from stepping in that space and closing the distance either. Spence has a slick backstep sliding in and out of range that can mitigate Ugas initiating what is also known as shell up and wait until the opponent is done firing and reset. By initiating, Ugas can benefit from the lack of counterpunching and win the high guard duel. But unfortunately for Ugas, that's not normally his style in fighting Spence with the weight and counter strategy as a relatively flat-footed fighter in the high guard. Spence will initiate offense as Ugas is essentially forfeiting the dictation of pace, the location of action in the ring, and he's likely not going to be able to outwork Errol Spence just like both Garcias. This style is Errol Spence's bread and butter. Yeah, but Danny Garcia is waiting for Errol to, to, to commit himself. He's waiting for that, that one mistake so he can take advantage. He's, he's allowing Spence to be first. Every time they, they... Spence's volume jab causes all kinds of problems for the strategy. Again, it controls distance, pace, disrupts rhythm, and sets up power. In the case of an open stance fight, it also serves as punch traffic, blocking punching lanes, as well as a form of controlling the lead hand. An open stance fight where lead hands are aligned, Arrow is a master at disrupting timing with his active jab. With opponents in the high guard and lacking movement, Arrow has the ability to forward step and range and pick his spots from the outside and mid range and variate his punches up and down, then reverse step or shuffle out of range to avoid counter punches in early rounds. As the rounds go by and he wears his opponents down, he jabs into the open space and works on the inside where he is amongst the best in boxing. A truly methodical approach from the undefeated unified welterweight champion, Errol Spence Jr. I think Ugas puts up a valiant effort landing several clean counter punches to the head and body and it just won't be enough. The volume, technical pressure, and high-level inside game of Errol Spence will most likely outwork Ugas. Ugas's high guard and lack of movement will eventually allow Errol to step inside and likely dominate Ugas, who isn't a highly skilled inside fighter akin to the vast majority of fighters that come out the Cuban amateur system. Ugas is a tough guy with a solid chin and solid defense, so I think he makes it to the final bill. My prediction is Errol Spence by decision. Especially for this fight, I feel the need to say that nothing would surprise me aside from the judges giving a close fight to Ugas because Spence is the money. Also, inactivity is a killer, and Spence's injured eye could crash the party at any time. Ugas is a highly skilled fighter who will cause anybody problems regardless. If he could somehow win the jab battle, or at least come close to making it even, and also initiate offense more, he has a shot to win. But from what he has displayed in the ring so far, I just don't see it happening. Let me also mention that as of January 1st, this fight doesn't have an official date or location. So hopefully we actually have a fight. As always, thank you for watching. Smash the like button. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Let me know who you got in the comment section. Peace. Unfortunately, some networks don't allow their film to be used for analysis, so Boxing Gems videos get blocked on YouTube and social media. So when they block the videos, you can catch them exclusive on Boxing Gems' Patreon channel along with all the other content. Become a patron today and don't miss a thing from Boxing Gems. Links in the description. Peace.